Welcome to the OFX Podcast. I'm Dave Claxton, and along with me is the Harlequin of hybrid hysteria, Bethany McChesney. <laughs> as always, as always with me. And yes, I did just come up with that one right there. Um, <laughs> and this episode is brought to you by Duonamic, maker of door frame pull-up dealies, and designateddrinks.ca. And I'm trying a new one tonight. I'm trying Groovy Golden. Which is not bad. It's not my favorite. It's gluten free. Is it? Yeah. Okay, look, is it gluten free or is it low gluten? Because people will care. There's a difference. Uh, they well, they said that one is is their gluten free beer from PEI. Clean ingredients, hangover free. That's that's for sure. <laughs> I don't know. We'll figure that out. But it, it, it's either low gluten or gluten free. So if you're anti gluten. Mm-hmm. that's the beer for you and it's actually not about it it's not too bad but i'm still hung up on one for the road and uh, triple bogey still my favorites <laughs> okay so we are still in the midst of deca hangover yes um, yeah totally like i am completely like uh, mm-hmm. like it's it's like it's so interesting because it until you really focus on an event and um, like your season kind of leads up to it. It's the end of your season. You don't really understand the post-race hangover and it's a real thing. And it happens to me all the time. And it's like, wow, like that post-race depression. It's like, well, I don't know what to do with myself. What am I training for now? And then you kind of take some time off and like, it's just, it's such a weird feeling. And if you've never really done that before, it's like something that I feel like people need to warn you about. <laughs> yeah. Cause it hits you. You think something's wrong. Right. And I mean, it's like, Mm-hmm. I took, I was prepared for it, sick, because I figured, and um, I figured the week after the race, and that was the end of my season, right? Mm-hmm. Me too, I decided, yeah. I decided I'm not going to work out the whole next week. I'm mm-hmm. going to eat whatever I want. I'm not going to do anything. Even if I feel like working out, I'm just going to do nothing and, and this stuff. And it was great. I really needed it, and it felt good. Mm-hmm. Um, Sunday, I got back into it and had just a, I went on a 5K run. Uh, like super easy pace. I went, I went with John Cross and we literally chatted the whole way, mm-hmm. you know, just relaxed, nice, easy run. And then we did a little gym workout. And then today, today I did um, 500 meter intervals. Um, really felt nice. 500 meter intervals, no knee braces. So that's <laughs> important. That's a big mm-hmm. thing. Felt really good. So yeah, it's nice to get back into it, but I still am like, I needed to put something on the calendar. <laughs> Yeah, so leading up to my last race of the season in anticipation of this letdown, I started registering for a couple of races that will be my first races back um, after the off season to just kind of help to blunt the disappointment of the season being over. So what did you sign up for? Um, well, we have a deck of strong mm-hmm. here in Ontario in January, end of January. Um, well, and then, further, should we throw up deck is strong first one ever for pure impact athletics mm-hmm. Brantford, Ontario you should get your tickets but you can't because it's sold out carry on <laughs> <laughs> yeah. too late <laughs> um, and yeah so then um, I didn't register yet for the high rocks in Chicago but because um, I'm scared but <laughs> but that is kind of the plan we did look at places. Yeah. And then I'm doing two road races. So I haven't really stepped back into road racing since doing OCR, um, just kind of for my mental state, because I feel like I do a lot better when I don't kind of go back into that world. But, um, there was two races that I wanted to do again, um, because I just had such awful experiences and then it would help me stay motivated to do some long winter mileage. So I'm doing, um, a uh, a winter half marathon it's winter it's beginning of Feb- of march so those it's still pretty cold and then i'm doing around the bay at the end of march it's a 30k in hamilton so i just had such an awful experience the first time i did it so i wanted to do it again and just kind of take it a little bit differently um from the mental side and just try to enjoy it a little bit better so they're on the calendar if i was ever to do a road race like a long road race it would probably be around the bay just because it's like super historic and isn't it like mm. the oldest road it's the race? oldest road race in north america 
Screw you, Boston Marathon. Yeah, it's so their slogan is older than Boston. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> I, mean, I guess my screw you, Boston Marathon was pretty close. But <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't know that. I knew they were the old. I knew they were super old. And I do know I got, I got some buddies that do it. And they say, like, when you finish, you go running into a stadium and your name comes yeah. up on the big screen. It's pretty cool. I mean, I'm never yeah. going to do it because that's 30K on the road. And I would sooner saw my arm off. But <laughs> you know, if I yeah. ever did, that would be one I would try. Um, yeah. So that's cool. That's awesome. And yeah, the DECA, of course, I'm, I'm on for the DECA too. That's my one down. I don't, I think that's the only one I have in the nearest future. There's mm -hmm. some things I might be doing in March though, that I got to look at and converse with um, and whatnot. But um, mm -hmm. I got, I got to plan it. Obviously there's a, and I got to find out when the hell OCRWC is. I know the anticipation. And then the teaser today. That was wrong. We're going to tell you, but you need to wait <laughs> a little bit longer. <laughs> no, no, they specifically said today and they lied. <laughs> I blame DeSena. He's teaching, the, oh, yeah. They're too focused OWC on that contract. Lie. He's teaching them how to lie. He's teaching them how to lie. how to lie. It's wrong. Stellar. Stellar. Yeah, communication. Less than stellar. Mm -hmm. um, it's a great t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> You said you're scared of high rocks, and I think that's a mistake, and we'll cover it quickly because, like, faster women are turning in really good times. And when I say faster women, I mean women who are probably a little more run-focused. Um, mm -hmm. Ida Matilda, or Ida Steensgaard, Ida Matilda Steensgaard, we, yeah. it's Ida for crying out loud. Yeah. Ida, she, Ida. You, she really just needs her first name said. We know who she is. She ran a 105.12. <laughs> In, yeah, uh, in her first over. one, that's really, really impressive. And from all intents and purposes, the sleds have become easier. So for you, yeah. in my head, I'm thinking here, so if the sleds are easier, the burpees are, are uh, that's really the only thing that gets you. I mean, you got to work on your wall balls, but that's yeah. within the realm. Um, yeah. that, that's not held back by your size. It's just the sled, really. Like coming from doing DECA stuff, the other things minus the wall balls is kind of the same, just longer um or and heavier but yeah it's just it's the sleds um that really they take a lot out of me and I just I find I have to just put so much training into um moving the sleds that which it's not super fun and uh I just I struggled so much with the pole the first time and it's it's I find it actually really hard to train unless you have that setup and finding that setup is pretty difficult so yeah, it's just the sleds that scare me. Like the pull, I just don't. <laughs> the pull is so much body weight. Yeah, like it is so much easier the more body weight you have because you literally just need to lean. And that's that's not something that you can just change. Yeah, right. So um, even if I gain five ten pounds, which I did, I purposely tried to gain weight for the high rocks that I did, and it's still like five pounds when you're only one ten is still not significant enough to move that sled in the pole. Um, and because I didn't really train it, which was my mistake, um, and how to kind of navigate with the rope and everything, I just felt like I was floundering so much with trying to learn something on the fly that I wasn't prepared for. So, uh, yeah, that was, I mean, it will be better this time because I know a lot better now how to train for it and, um, that I do need to focus on the pull a lot more. Um, I didn't mind the push, but yeah, so it's just, I don't want to be in that same position and still struggle as much as I did the first time. Yeah. Well, but, it, and it makes sense that you would like the push, the push is like power, right? It's power. It's power. Yeah. Output. You have that. But the yeah. pull literally is body weight leaning against it. You're not yeah. really putting that much power into it. Or like, say for me, if I'm pulling that sled, I'm just mm -hmm. leaning back and trying not to fall down. Right? Yeah. And, and that's where I'm getting it. Whereas you have to drive, 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 drive. Yeah. And that's why I think if you put on five more pounds, it probably doesn't make a shit bit of difference because no. you're lean. So let's say you, you know, you lose, you're not, it's not like you're leaning that extra five pounds entirely. So you're maybe leaning with an extra three pounds of pressure. Right. Yeah it's hardly worth it right to you yeah. probably better just to keep wherever you're comfortable mm -hmm. but it's anyway I, but i do believe the sleds are getting faster they're getting yeah. easier, and i think that that will help you um so two things obviously there was like four high rocks in eight days 
Okay, so this is why I'm confused about who was where. <laughs> yeah, it was an unbelievable amount. And then I think on the 10th, there's another two. Like, there are just so yeah. many high rocks overseas. It's, it's so hard to keep up with. Um, <laughs> but let's start. Let's go through a couple of important ones for us. Um, Madrid. So Madrid, our, I don't even know, our, our good friend, our the friend of the show, or what, Tara Jackson. <laughs> Went over to Madrid and she kicked some ass. She ran a 104.18, um, winning over second place by more than five minutes. So, like, she was kind of running alone. Good stuff. But, um, yeah. you know, uh, 104.18, I believe that's going to be enough to get her in the Worlds. Mm -hmm. And she should probably, even though she will be at um, the U.S. race, I believe, U.S. championship or North American championship, whatever it is. And probably would have a great shot at the podium there, but I think this solidifies her chances. Um, she was followed by Jezebel Kramer or Kremer and Daniel Kuto. Mm -hmm. In that same race, uh Jonathan Wynn, almost almost 60 minutes dead. Um one hour, eight seconds. And Joffrey Vozen, uh 60 minutes or yeah, 60 minutes, 21 seconds. So a nice close finish there. And Tiago Luso, Luso, who we had on the podcast once one award, one oh one forty. That's that's a good time for him. And this is what I mean about times dropping. Like I would have thought Tiago before was like a one Oh five guy kind of thing. Yeah. And now, I mean, things are moving faster. Everybody's moved. Not everybody got in that much better shape over the year. Mm -hmm. Things are just moving. Uh, you think so? Yeah, I totally think so. I mean, there's guys are dropping sixties all over the place, going sub sixties and, and stuff like that. Dylan, mm -hmm. Dylan, like, before his best was a 60 30 and then he runs a 58 30 improves it by two minutes like yeah shit's going fast so you think it's the change in the sleds i think so because i think not only is the sled easier to push now but then that saves the energy that you were having to burn on that for the rest of the course <laughs> which yeah. for me is kind of disappointing <laughs> i liked i liked that this i liked that deco was light and fast and, and high rocks was heavy and, and sluggish mm -hmm. i liked that but you know, I, I think it, though it just reduces the barrier of people willing to enter. I agree, and high rocks is daunting enough without sleds that nobody can move. Yes, like even the AK alone, like the average, if the average person is ninety minutes or more, like you're asking people to basically put the effort in of a half marathon. Like it's yeah. not, but at a different type of intensity where you also have to be able to move heavy weight. Like it's just. It's quite a challenging event to convince people to sign up for. It is. It is. And even the open wave is the same thing, right? It's the same distance. Yeah. And, and going on. So, I mean, it's, they're in a tough spot. I, I really like what they do. I love, love what they do. I like the race, but I think they need a shorter option, option, which I've said a thousand times. So I'm not going to say yeah. it. Um, Low barrier entry. Yes. And Last then year. in Hamburg, we have the women's pro, Michaela Norman. With a 60-45, absolutely obliterating the women's records. She's a, a crossfitter for Sweden, or from Switzerland, I think. Yeah, from Switzerland. But she, like, to look at her, she looks like a runner. Like a strong runner, but a runner. And her run splits were fast. Yeah, ridiculously fast. Yeah. Like, I think they were faster than Edith's. I Yeah, I think so. Um, like, not, she was right there. They were all significantly under four minutes. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously Ida came third in that, which is great. For, and in between them, Miriam Von Rohr, mm -hmm. mistress of the wall balls. Never a no rep on that girl. <laughs> and then uh, for the men, uh, in third, Patrick Gui with a 60 minute, 60 minute 39 second. Holger Corner with a 60 minute 21 second. And this is what I'm saying. All these guys, 60 minutes. These were not 60 yeah. minute guys last year. Mm -hmm. and alexander ronkovic 58 48 mm -hmm. so we know he's good he's like perennial podium guy but 58 48 is still quick for him so yeah things have upped in pace which i think is okay it's great i'm glad the sleds are standardized across the countries that's awesome but i mm -hmm. still disagree with the times being the qualifications <laughs> courses are still just too different it's not fair you can get a really mm -hmm. bad draw and you know, and, and miss out on your chance when you deserve to be there. I still like my way better, which is not a surprise. <laughs> <laughs>
that said, yeah. you know what? We don't have a ton of time. Um, and speaking of high rocks and hybrid racing and deck fit, we're going to go to our guest who is just coming off. I say being the number one performer at Deca Worlds. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, actually, according to our draft, he was the highest point getter and mm -hmm. earned the number one overall pick. So, yeah, um, Ryan Kent. What's up, guys? All right. Hello. Dude, fresh on an Echo Bike. How fast can you do 25 cals? On an Echo Bike? Yeah, on an Echo Bike. I don't know. They are a little harder, though, aren't they? Yeah, because you don't they don't they don't give you those free calories like the assault bike does. Yeah. Well, I guess the one they use in deck of fit doesn't give you the free cows, but the assault bike that I have does give you the free cows. Yeah. We were just saying uh, Austin Azar said he he pulled a what was it? He said he was 32 seconds for 25 cows on an echo bike. Yeah, I mean I think that's fresh, that's fresh pretty, as a daisy. Yeah. That's pretty solid. I would I would think I could do a cow a second. So probably 25, 25 seconds, maybe. Yeah. We, we were just talking before, before you come back. So I went to a friend's gym this weekend and they had an Aerodyne bike. And dude, I was like 20 seconds for 25 cal. And I'm like, it's like <laughs> this isn't right, man. It's not even close. Like Those are the, uh, the are those the, the older school ones, right? I guess. It's like a feel-good bike, man. It just makes you feel good about yourself. It's like, <laughs> I, 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 it's ridiculous. There's nothing, because I'm like, like I can do sub minute, maybe in like a 50, maybe fresh, maybe a 45 or something like that. But it's not, it's not 20. That's for damn sure. So funny. So we'll, anyway. we'll like, we'll spray paint that, bring that to the next event, spray paint it black. Yeah. yeah put yeah. like the assault fitness logo on it. Make yeah. sure you get on that one. <laughs> <You're set. laughs> I want to see if you can pull off a, pull off like a 10 second one. <laughs> i don't know like just something, feeling good today. something's wrong with his monitor i will <laughs> say this though i will say this it does kind of scare me a bit by the way guess ryan kent will go okay it does kind of scare me a bit when i think about some of these other gyms doing deca strongs and deca miles i guarantee they're not all using the right right equipment all the time like you know and I with mean, the time, I, I'm, I'm hoping they are but i hope so too i, I don't know but I worry about it. There's so many of them out there and, and I could see them like, hey, we got one lane and I'm sure they all have the one lane of equipment because I know that's a prerequisite to have the one proper lane of equipment. But I wonder if some of them are like, oh, well, we borrowed a bike and a ski erg and this and that from somebody else and to put that second line in and then maybe. Oh, true, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I have no evidence of this. It's just my concern and my excuse for not qualifying sometime. <laughs> <laughs> valid. Totally valid. valid. Exactly. They're all cheating except me. That's what's going on. <laughs> How are you so, guys doing? We're good. Yeah. We were, uh, we were saying we're coming off of the post-race blues, end of the season. It's a, it's, yeah, it's a hard place to be in. Just mm -hmm. for me personally, because I'm like having to flip the script so quick and kind of transition into high rocks right now. So it's mm -hmm. not much celebration. You know, it's like back to the grind and um mm -hmm business business as usual but that saves that that saves that post-race de depression because even though it's hard right and you're 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 drilling okay. yourself you don't got that lull well actually i got super sick after atlantic city uh, i uh i wouldn't be surprised I, I, if you caught something there maybe for for four <laughs> straight days um i basically did nothing oh. um and then just started kind of getting back into the swing of things which was super frustrating because I'm, I feel like I'm on a time crunch right now to get ready for for uh, LA, and I needed I needed like every day to to prepare myself, and I'm I missed out on four. So, um, yeah, we'll see what we'll see what happens in two weeks. Is it? And this isn't what I was planning, but is it silly that High Rocks is demanding you have a pre a race before the U.S. <sighs> Championships when there's only what like four races in the states? I was joking with Rich Ryan about this, how there was that, the commotion about should the, the prior world champion have um, like a pass mm -hmm. to, like he wouldn't have to race, he should just show up and be able to compete. And I was one of the people that said, no, like this is a new year, like you need to yeah. prove yourself again. 
And now that I'm in the situation I'm in, I'm like, I won, I won the North American champs last year. I should be invited <laughs> back. <laughs> so <laughs> I've been, I've been the backer of, I believe that the previous champion should be able to get in. Like, I think, I think that that should be that way. And even I think with the world championship qualification, I don't, I still don't like the way they're doing it because the courses to me are still way too different for it to be that much based on time. I want it to be based on positioning on championship races. Um, that way it's head to head and it's completely fair. So even if the course is crappy here or, or whatever, longer, more turns, whatever, it doesn't matter because everybody on that day is facing the same thing. So right. I'd like to see that. Um, before we go too much into high rocks and going into LA, uh, we'll go back to DECA last weekend, obviously a great weekend, but even prior to that, talk about going into West Palm. Mm. So when you went into West Palm, what was your mindset there? Because it was a huge event, big time competition coming. Yeah, um, I was super excited to race Ryland finally. You know, I'd seen what he had done in uh, Deca Mile. I think by, at that point he had already run 1704 Deca Mile. Mm -hmm. um, I think he had put up a, a solid Deca Strong time too. Um, so I was just really excited to race him. I was that particular race, I ran my own race and I found myself behind um and i i did kind of reel him in a little bit towards the end but i wasn't quite sure what he was capable of what what how he liked to race um so that that west palm event i would say he caught me off guard a little bit but it was a, a great learning experience for me to kind of see how he raced and then hopefully apply a plan to to potentially take him down in at the world championships, but I was super fit. I mean, I was, I was really, um, in, in really good shape. Um, I think I was actually in better shape at DECA worlds. I just, um, didn't, didn't run the race that, that I wanted to run. Um, but yeah, the West Palm was, was great. I mean, Ryland and I both went around 28, 30. Um, and that really gave me confidence that I think we can take this down even further. I think we could, you know, sub 28 isn't like completely off the table. And yeah, I mean, it was, it was awesome. And then we obviously had like, I don't know, two and a half months until the world championships after West Palm. So, you know, one thing I took away from that event was that I, I think I need to get faster. You know, my stations are already really, really good. Um, now I just need to be able to move, move a little bit quicker. And um, that was where I felt I could gain most of my time and that's that's where I went to work I I went on like a really strict like 5k 10k uh like running block I'm like all of my interval stuff was very 5k to 10k pace type stuff and all signs were pointing to like I was gonna run like really really fast I believed I could go under 17 minutes um in in the 5k Fortunately, I did not do that. Um, but again, I think a lot of that came came down to my race strategy that I went with at, at the World Championships. And that ended up working to some degree. But then there was Rich who, who played his cards right and, you know, ended up beating us both. But I, hopefully I, that kind of fills you in on kind of, you know, where I was at and then, you know, what I did and then and then the world. So. Rich, Rich ran such a smart race. He, 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 night and day, he, he ran an incredibly smart race. He, from my perspective, it looked like he took complete advantage of you and Ryland battling each other and, mm -hmm. and, and just jumped in and stuff like that. But I know, so back from then, and the reason I brought up West Palm was I saw Ryland after West Palm at Blue Mountain. And we talked just really briefly about, about running the Decca race there. And, and when he beat you and I said, I said, that was amazing. I said, but did you, did, did you wake the bear? And he's like, I might've done that race one race too soon. <laughs> and, and I said, that's what I was thinking right. is like, if he had right. caught you unaware, you know, if let's just say he had run like a, a 31 or a 30 or whatever and got into the finals and you know, you, you wouldn't maybe not be prepared for what he actually had the ability to. And then he ran that race there. He could have caught you all off guard, but he brought that one out maybe one race too early. And now you guys, yeah. you guys were all of a sudden like, hey, this 
this freaking guy is for real. We need to be on our A game or we're done. Absolutely. And if you talk to most of the guys, you know, I think it's the general consensus was we all knew we had to raise our game in, in training. Um, started doing like workouts that were even like more advanced than I had even been doing up until that point. Um, just trying to find ways to to get a little bit faster. And, and it's because of Rylan, you know, like he really came in and, you know, made his presence known. And I think all of us knew that we needed to step our game up and that that starts in training. So. When you ran the, um, I think it was the mile. Yeah, the mile. Do you think if Rylan could do box overs properly, it might have been a different story? You know, it's funny. He, I, his technique is a little wonky, but if you look at the splits, he's in and out of there at about the same time as all of us, which is very surprising because, like, the box is sliding all over the place. It's almost <laughs> tipping over at some points. You're like, what? what is this guy doing? Does Maybe he feels comfortable, like, doing it that way. I don't think it's necessarily the, the most efficient way to go about it. I think the biggest mistake he actually made in that race was he, when he went to zone one, he went to the, to the far side of the lunge mat, which when he got done with lunges, he actually had to turn around and go back out the opposite direction. Whereas I turned into that first one um, and had a clear, like a shorter path coming out. And, you know, that's just like one of, I'm sure many, you know, moments. And I'm sure I lost a few seconds somewhere oh, yeah. too, you know, like, um, like sit-ups. Right. Right. <laughs> that was Deca strong. Though. That was strong. That was the strong. Yeah. yeah. So it's, you're, you're not thinking about those things in the moment, you know, you just kind of go and grab one. And then it's not until after the fact you're like, crap, I, I maybe should have chose, you know, a different, you know, whatever it is, rower, box jump, you know, skier or something. So what did you think then of the setup of the deck of strong layout? Uh, I, I liked it. I, I, I would personally prefer in that particular event that we all have just like set everything from zone one to zone 10. Everyone has their assigned um, like machines and you just go down the line. Um, I didn't, you know, I'm super stoked for Rich to get second place in, in Deca Strong, but I feel like Ryan Corning kind of got the raw end of the deal based mm -hmm. off the way he likes to race. He likes to go out conservative and then come on late. So he found himself scrambling around looking for open, yeah. open uh, machines and stuff because of his race strategy. And I don't think you should be penalized based off your race strategy. Um, so I would say for just for just for that one, we should have assigned machines all the way through. Um, it would just prevent a lot of that chaos that I think mm -hmm. we all saw and was actually pretty fun in the moment, you know, like it got, you know, the, the crowd was going nuts. You know, we were really excited and um, it definitely felt like a race, but um, when everyone is doing like a time trial format in in training and at the affiliates like everything leading up to world championships was you had your assigned thing you didn't have to worry about anything I think they need to keep that um, at the world championships rather than just like a free-for-all mm -hmm. I, I enjoyed the free-for-all on the mile because you, yeah, you were that's okay. and, coming in. and that was okay but I agree with yeah. you on the strong the other thing I would say was that the farmers carry and the tank should have been 90 degree turned so that you didn't have on the strong so that you didn't have to come in from the side you would come in straight at it and then like right, so say, basically maintain just your lane yeah okay i get what you're saying yeah i, yep. th I think think that would have been a smoother transition for the strong and i agree with you in the strong i would like to have seen everybody have their spot i think they probably did that simply for the mile yeah quick setup yeah mm -hmm. quick setup um, but how 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 long would it take to turn the turn them all around and face them back for the mile? You know, yeah. probably not much time at all. Yeah. No, no, no. So, not too bad. I think it would have been doable. But you know, I mean, again, this is their first crack at it, and I thought 
for the most part, the setup was really quite, quite good. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you know, I had a lot of predictions on the weekend and some of them made me look pretty smart, but you made me look stupid because I said, there's no way anyone's going to set a record on this course because there's too much distance between for the strong and the mile too much. The course is not set up for speed and, and you just freaking smashed it. Did, did um, you think that was coming or did you just kind of stumble into that? When I saw the layout, I mean, I knew for sure after doing an 1130 at altitude, like I going into deck is strong, I knew 1115 was legitimately on the table. But then when I saw the setup, I was like, yeah, there's no way like we're setting, we're setting a PR today. And that, and that was fine. Like I didn't care. Um, if anything, I thought that the little bit of transition time in between some of the, the zones would actually benefit me. So I was actually really excited about that because, you know, somebody like Ryan Corning, who was arguably like my biggest competitor going into that event, um, he's used to just going bang, 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 whereas I feel comfortable kind of jogging, you know, in between stations. Um, so I didn't think a, a record was, was on the table, um, but I got to say, like, I've never been so – just like jacked up in the middle of the race. Like I could feel the energy of that place. And um, I could also sense like little moments where I was like, one, I was, I was hitting, like when I got on the ski erg and I was pulling, pulling down, I had a pace in mind that I wanted to be at, but I was pulling a little bit faster and it felt, felt comfortable. And I was like, Oh my God, like I feel amazing right now. Um, and then just other moments in the race where I come out of the ski erg and go to the farmer's carry and I've got Rich right on my butt and I'm just, I'm, he's my boy. So I'm really excited about that, knowing that I'm probably going to pull away from him at the next one. Um, and we were able to see where everyone was at on the farmer's carry. And I, I could tell I already had like a decent lead um, over like my biggest threats. So I was just living in the moment, man. I was, I was really excited and um, I really felt no pain until maybe like five burpees left in, in zone 10. I was just riding on, you know, they talk about the runner's high. Sometimes you get that. And um, I've experienced that as well, but I've never had it in like a functional fitness competition. And I 1000% had it in DECA strong. And, um, you know, that's just like, that's like a variable that you can't prepare for. It just kind of happens in the moment. And it gave me like an incredible boost um, to the point where I, I think I was able to push like harder than like I thought was even possible, which, you know, ended up running like 1109 or 1110, which when I got done, I didn't even know what I ran. Like somebody said something and I was like, like what just happened? Like, I cannot believe that right now. Um, so that was, yeah, that was, that was really, really cool. Well, in this race too, I think you celebrated coming off the bike. Oh yeah. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I was like, or that's no, the cardinal mistake in racing. Like you don't celebrate till the finish. Cause that's right. like, that's when something happens all like we've seen it before. Someone celebrates in the last second, someone like edges them out. And yeah, I remember you celebrated coming off the bike. So we knew you were feeling good. It was just, <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of so, funny. <laughs> like functional fitness is a little bit different than Spartan or OCR, whereas like you could slip off a rig or you mm -hmm. could miss a spear throw. So you don't want to celebrate and like jinx yourself. But it's like I knew I could push the sled and I knew I could do the Ram burpees um, at a pretty good, pretty good clip. So mm -hmm. I was like, I, it was actually going into, I think, the tank, leaving leaving the dead balls, going to the tank. Mm -hmm. I was like, I was running and like fist bumping the, <laughs> the crowd. And um, I don't, honestly, I don't even know what I was thinking in the moment. I was just <laughs> so jacked up. And honestly, I, I knew that at that point I had it like wrapped mm -hmm. up and um, yeah, probably celebrating a little bit too early, but I knew that I could, I could get through that um, tank and then the burpees at the end and, and hold them off and we talked with you just after and i mean you were you were pretty emotional and i, I thought that was great to see because it it brings a lot of legitimacy to how important this event is and to how hard you guys work for it. 
Um, did you expect to be that way? Like, I know sometimes you can be an emotional guy, but was that, was that yeah. expected from you? Um, I think so. I think when, um, you know, I thought about this weekend a lot before it even happened and, um, kind of went through scenarios in my head about, you know, what I would do if I did when, you know, would I just, would I be dead on the ground? Would I be celebrating? Would I be emotional? Um, those thoughts actually went through my head before the weekend. And, um, I think there was, you know, I expected a little bit of, of a cocktail of all three of those things. Um, but, um, in the moment, you know, I think everything just kind of hit me, you know, um, when you came up and, and spoke to me and, uh, I was just like, oh my God, like I freaking did it. You know, like you cross the line and it's, at first, you don't even realize what what just happened. And then, you know, a little bit of time goes by and um, you're able to think about it. But yeah, I mean, it meant it meant so much to me to, to win that. I've, I've, I wanted that in Spartan for so many years and, you know, always came up a little bit short. I finished I finished fifth at Spartan World Championships. I finished sixth, like twice at Spartan World Championships. Um, you know, like I've been chasing a world title. Like I didn't want to be known as one of the best to ever do this and not have that on my resume. Um, and, and legacy is actually something that's that's very important to me. Um, <laughs> it's actually something I'm, I'm talking to my therapist about right now because like, like I want, when I'm, when everything's like all said and done, like I just, I, I want to be remembered, you know? Like I don't want to be somebody who just, kind of came and went, you know, like even when I'm long gone, dead, like I, I want to be remembered, like that's important to me. Um, and again, like I said, I'm talking to my therapist about this, how, you know, your legacy is is more than just your your athletic achievements and stuff. And that's something I am, you know, working on. But uh, that was, that was very important to me. But then after I felt kind of unsatisfied a little bit because I didn't feel like I won a hybrid competition I won almost like a, a workout like a CrossFit workout I so I felt like to validate myself like I needed to come back and I needed to win the mile I needed to win something that that had running in it too not just just the stations we all know that I'm good at the stations I need I need to do something with running too and um, so I was you know actually very hungry and motivated to to come back and do the mile I think, and I, I kind of called it before, I thought the mile would be the best race going in and the most exciting one going in for me, from my perspective as a, a spectator, as someone a fan and watching it. And I think I, I, I think I was absolutely right. I think, sorry, Rich, I, I, no offense, <laughs> but, but I thought the mile was the, was the one that was different. That was the one, the true crossover where you had to be able to run and you had to be able to do the station. The fit is awesome but it is still very much to me, a runner's game. You know, a runner can come in there and, and just work their way through their stations. Like if a runner comes in there, I can do a good bike. They got a great shot. But I find right. when you're into the, into the mile, it's a little bit different. I just, I think it's a little, it's a better. Well, I think around. it's so I actually, I, I was talking to Rich about this also. They're both hybrid my deck of mile and deck of fit are both hybrid events. Mm -hmm. But I think Deca Fit is a hybrid event that leans towards a runner. Yeah. And Deca Mile is a hybrid event that leans towards the stations. Because if you look at the percentage of time you run versus stations in both the Fit and the Mile, they basically flip-flop. It's almost like two-thirds of Deca Fit is running. Yeah. But then the Deca Mile is two-thirds of Deca Mile is stations. So it just the percentage is just flip-flop. So what if we did the deck of 2,500, which is just one <laughs> lap around there instead of two laps, and then you meet right at their 50-50? I like that. I'm always thinking here. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was always wondering kind of, I'm like, what's the purpose of even like deck of mile versus deck of fit? But like I just said to you, I think they're both hybrid events, but one can kind of favor the other. Yeah, You know, like I think the deck a mile is going to favor someone who with a good engine, but is very good at the stations, whereas deck of fit, 
I think can really, you know, if I were to like build a, a, a physique for Deca fit, I would say Rich Ryan is, is, yeah. is, is the model, you know, like I, I would personally think I'm a little too big for Deca fit, you know, like I, I'm at a good weight for, for Deca strong, Deca mile and high rocks, but, but Deca fit, I might be packing on, you know, 10 to 12 pounds and, um, looking back on it, I'm actually pretty proud that I was able to keep up with, with somebody like Rich, who is, you know, much, much faster than I am. Yeah, Rich's running was, was spot on that day. He just, he looked so smooth and so yeah. just, just watching him go was, was a treat. Um, so shifting gears, heading to LA, you're getting ready for LA. You're, you're a little behind. What's your anticipation going to this? Cause I'm, I'm thinking there's going to be fairly good competition here. Cause this is, you know, everybody getting ready it's for last Chicago. Chance. So how are you feeling going in? Is, and, and really is the performance in LA that important? Uh, to that question, no, it's not. Like, I, honestly, my mindset going in is to just get a qualifying time and just get back to work, get back to training, because I haven't been putting in the, the training right now to, to do super, super well at High Rocks. Uh, I think I think I'm going to do just fine for sure, but I don't think I'm going to be setting any any blistering times or any records or anything like that. Um, I did I did a little high rocks workout yesterday actually um, that that had a hundred meters of walking lunges and a hundred wall balls in it, and I am my body today is so sore. Like my, my legs hurt so bad. I'm like using the railing to get down the steps. Um, and I think that really just goes to show that you have to put in the work to, to be conditioned for, for something like high rocks. Um, so I know I have some work to do to get back to where I was at, at the end of, you know, the previous high rock season, but I'm not concerned about getting back to that. It's just, a matter of like when, and I don't think I'm going to be able to get there before, before LA. So I'm not going to put any pressure on myself. I was joking with, with Rich that I was like, dude, I'm just going to come in there and just chill my way through like a 63 and just <laughs> get my time and, you know, go home and get back to work. But, um, you know, there's a chance that I could surprise myself and, and do actually pretty well. Cause you know, I, I, I am really fit right now, but um, just some of the specificity towards the movements. You know, I was really struggling on some burpee broad jumps yesterday. Uh, you know, I, I did 80 meters and it was kind of around like 20, 20 some seconds off of where I'd like to be on that on that station. So there's some work to do, but um, I'm not concerned about not being able to get back to that. It's just, I'm not going to try to like rush the process to get ready for for LA because I feel like I can go in and get my time and then you know get ready for for Chicago and I'm trying to actually I want to go to the European Championships too um, I'm trying to find out if we are actually able to show up and collect prize money if if we show up um, because there's a good chunk of change on the line so you know if if I spend a thousand bucks for a ticket to go win potentially eight, 8,000, like I'll, I'll take that chance. Um, but, but I don't know for sure. I'm going to ask the guys in, in LA and see if that's, um, you know, on the table. From my understanding, I think it is because okay. it's, 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 I don't think there's a limit as to where your um, citizenship is to compete, compete in the race. So if, if it's open to jump in the race, I would assume the prize money is open as well. My question is, let's just say for theoretical sake, because the top three people placing at each race move on to the world championships, let's just for argument's sake, say you win Chicago and then you go over and you win in, in the UK. Does that roll down or are you taking away a spot? So does that roll down and it would be two, three, four, or does that now go to the top times qualifying times instead so i'm gonna have to reach out to mintra and see what happens. why do you always have to ask these complicated questions it's what i do this is my thing that's all i know <laughs> not very fast um so that's actually that's actually a really good that's a really good point what do you think 
Do you think it should roll down to fourth? I, I actually do. I think it should roll down yeah. to fourth because again, it's that in that same head to head scenario. I like, I mean, I would, I would like to see, and I said this before, I'd like to see top five in the U S top five in the UK, the two champions get, get a, a buy back in and then a last chance, the top three podium get, get, uh, advancements into the world. So at no point is time relevant. It's all about placement at certain events. That would be me, but um, Mintra didn't like that idea. I don't even know. I don't. I don't have a, a great solution right now. I, I think what they did this year is is obviously better than yes than what was last year for sure. Um, but I think there's still, you know. I think we can still brainstorm and come up with some some better ideas. And, and that's why I say I think this year is better as well. But the thing about it is it really wouldn't make much difference even if it was that way last year because the top of the order wasn't the problem. It was the ones down at the bottom that were maybe miscued, like, example, Rich not being involved in originally, you know, stuff like that. So, it, you know, everybody's got their opinion. That's just mine they're doing their best and, and I'm really not going to hold it against them. I think they're doing a good job. So, yeah. well, and I, but if they're working so hard to try to create standardization with the sleds, then they want times to be relevant when it comes to who's qualifying for what, or they wouldn't care if the sleds in the U S were heavier than in the UK. Yeah. But until they make a standardized course, like DECA did, it won't matter because like you look at that one in New York and it was like a, a snake going all over the place and originally was supposed to go outside it can't compare to the ones they just had in in madrid or or, or hamburg right like they're completely different i feel so. like they, if they shortened you know you know high Rocks likes to do 500 meter laps mm -hmm. if they shortened it to to 333 and did three laps of that every course was a three lap course you could honestly maybe there's an anomaly in there somewhere but I would think that off that alone, you could set up the interior the same every single place. I absolutely agree. I, so, I think that would be the way to go. Um, <laughs> Maybe they'll get there eventually. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. But, dude, these times this year have been so fast um, from from men, men and women, really, you know. Yeah. Uh, you almost had a sub-60 woman. Oh my god! So we're so I'm in a fantasy football league with uh, <laughs> like Bracken, Rich, Nick Riker, Dylan Scott, Jeff, who does the announcing at the Deca events. Uh, David Magida. Um, I think Nick Nick Mask is in there too. Um, I, I know I'm missing somebody, but we're in like a group chat with that. And um, when that girl ran that sixty forty five, we were all just like, dude. What the freak? Like, because in my mind, I'm like, nobody's beaten Meg Jacoby by three minutes. Like, I just mm -hmm. don't see that happening. Um, but this girl honestly looks, I looked her up on on Instagram and she looks fit. Oh, you yeah. know, like she 100% looks the part. Um, but I don't know, man. Like, I really don't know. I guess I'll find out in L.A. You know, Isn't that amazing, though? It was uh, two weeks ago, Meg Jacoby was unbeatable. And now she's not. Hey, this sport is growing in leaps and bounds so fast. And and it was her first high rocks. Yeah. Which is bizarre. Yeah, so she's um, bound to get like at least a, a noticeable improvement in the second one. The women's field has progressed so much in this season. Um, if you aren't running like under 65 minutes and in, in a high rocks for, oh. for pro women, like you're not like you don't even you're not going to make the podium. Mm -hmm. And if we would have said that a year ago, you would have been like, you're breaking records. Yeah, for sure. And so, it's just standard that you finish with 100 wall balls unbroken. <laughs> because Michaela did it, too. That's the new norm. Did she? Yeah. I'm not going to be doing that anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> like I think it's more of the women. The women seem to be pulling it off. The lighter yeah. ball seems to help. And, you know, there's been some, like, like Dylan Scott ran a 58, which which was yeah. super impressive. 
Um, but when I look at some of the races that a lot of the Europeans have done this year, it hasn't been that impressive. They've all been kind of 58, 59. We're talking Tobias, Tim, we Tim Weinich. Um, Ronkovic. Ronkovic, uh, Sandbach. Like all these guys are 58, 59. Um, so the men's time isn't like – it's not like the women right now. So I don't know. I don't know what's going on. But if you look at that, right, it has the, the women have definitely improved over there, but the men over there, like you say, marginal improvement, definitely better. And uh, Dylan, big improvement there. But Dylan's probably one of the first, and I'm, I think he's the only elite 15 from America who has run one yet this year and with the new sleds, right? So when Megita ran his, I don't think they had instituted the new sleds and stuff yet. So he was on, on the old stuff when he ran that 60. So now they've instituted the new ones. That's why I'm expecting, you know, some good times in LA and some monumental times in Chicago. I think they'll, I think they'll, you'll find like, like let's say some 57s. Yeah. Maybe, maybe less. Yeah. And I think it's a big step for big step forward in the equalization. And I think that's what's happening. I think over there, their sleds already were quicker. And now when you come over here, that's why I think these our sleds are going to be much more quicker comparatively to what we had before. So you should see times like the guys that were running just sub 60 now bouncing up two minutes or so, because it's not just the time you put on the sled, but the right. energy it saves for you to race later. And that honestly hurts somebody like a hunter, mm -hmm. you know, somebody who really, and, and honestly myself too, you know, the, the heavier... Board. The heavier the sleds, the better. Um, and if, if it's if it's not as challenging for some of the the lighter athletes, you know they're 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 going to be able to stay in the mix there. Yeah. Where typically that's where somebody like myself or Hunter would would pull away. So I'm very excited to try it out. Um, hopefully they'll forget in LA and keep the old the old setup. <laughs> Although my strength numbers have gone down, like. You know, I've, I've been pushing some sleds this week and pulling some sleds and um, my strength numbers have have gone down significantly in that department. I, I think I'm going to be OK, but, um, you know, I, I still have some work to do for sure. But, you know, this season's very exciting to me because I still don't really know what Hunter is going to do. I, I assume um, I assume he's not racing you know, which really kind of opens the door for, for not just myself, but, you know, a lot of other athletes too. And uh, yeah, I think it's going to be, it's going to be an exciting season. Do you think Hunter not being here, do you view it as an opportunity as in, like you just said, or as a missed opportunity as a chance to beat him head to head? A little bit of both, a little bit of both. I think coming out of the world championships last year, it was very similar to how I feel about DECA fit. Like I, I didn't feel like I ran my best race on that day. Um, and I, I, I felt like I, I could have given Hunter a better run for his money at that world championships. And for the longest time after that race, I, I wanted another crack at him. You know, I'm like, I'd rather lose again, but know that I went up against the best. Um, but now that some time's gone by, I'm like, eh. Go retire. I'll take. <laughs> I'll take over. Like, give me that check. <laughs> awesome. No, I. I just have one more thing to say uh, from a personal standpoint. I, I wanted to thank you because every time I do one of those live streams at Decca, you are always super supportive. You always make a point to come over and say nice things, and I really appreciate it. Put a lot of work into it, and I just want to let you know publicly, and everybody else know that Ken is a really good guy, and it doesn't go. It 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 doesn't go unnoticed, and I appreciate it and yeah so, man thank you for sure i uh i send that link out to you know all like a lot of friends and family who who want to watch me compete and a lot of it comes from the feedback that i get from them they're like dude the live stream was awesome and then obviously i'm really excited to go back and watch it and when i do i'm, I'm just like yeah man dave is like dave knows this stuff man and it, it comes off very easy for you um you're not you don't have to try very hard you know what you're talking about um and it just rolls off the tongue and oh, yeah man i'm just genuinely having a good time there <laughs> <That's> <laughs> and it. i know 
I know That's you are. Know Generally you are. having a good time and hoping not to get run over. That's about it. <laughs> Beth, do you got anything else for Ryan tonight? No, that's really great. Thanks, Ryan, so much for coming on. And congrats again on your double win at Worlds and all the best at High Rocks. And we will see you in Chicago. Sounds good, guys. Thank you.